Now, then, there may not be a date for a referendum yet, but the battle lines are already being drawn over Britain's membership of the European Union. Key business figures, politicians and even a former head of the army have been pinning their colours to the mast. Last week saw the launch of a second exit campaign, too, with the cross-party vote leave. But it's competing against a rival group, Leave.eu, which has the backing of UKIP. The party's leader, Nigel Farage, joins me now. Very good morning to good you, morning. Mr Farage. I mean, and that's the simplified version of what's no, going I, on with I, the... But actually, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of campaigns on the actually, Leave it's side. Wrong. You're wrong. Your introduction is wrong. I support every campaign what, that wants to get... I support every campaign that wants to get Britain out of the European yeah. Union. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to be partisan about this and say I'll back this group over that group. I'll back everybody that wants us to be outside the European Union. The point is, you know, it's been sort of put that the Leave campaign is divided. They're two completely different campaigns. You know, one, the Leave.eu campaign yep. has got 200,000 people signed up to it. It's non-party political and it's trying to reach millions of voters. The other, which is Vote Leave, is a Westminster-based group making business arguments. They're completely different things. Okay, and actually, but, I think they're complementary. But, but, you know, but, but just so happened to be in the uh, Vote Leave, the Westminster-based one, is your only MP. And well, colleague, but well, he's in Scarswell. Well, he's in Westminster, and he's with a group of people. He's worked with, but he's not in your one. And he's, I'm, I'm not in any. Ca no, 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 please, can we get this straight? Right. I'm not in any campaign. I'm the leader of UKIP. We are out all over the country, holding public meetings, campaigning. I'm in Gateshead tomorrow night, doing it. There are two groups who've set themselves up to be umbrellas. I support both of them, but they're both completely different. But the issue of leadership does loom. I mean, in terms, you're a seasoned campaigner. You know, you saw it in the general election, we've seen mm. it in the referendum campaign in Scotland. The public, who have to make the decision, yeah. need to get their handle on someone, a, a, a figurehead, someone leading this. The well, ad campaign, that's you, I isn't think it? That's honest, in the public's mind, you are most associated with that message. I think, to be honest with you, it, it needs to be several people. And I'm sure when we see the in campaign, you know, they're not going to have just one per... Yeah, OK, Stuart Rose is heading it up, but he's not the only guy that's going to appear on your programme. There'll be other spokesmen and spokeswomen for them, as there will be for our side of the campaign. I lead UKIP. Uh, we're the people that have forced this referendum onto the agenda. We're going to be out doing our thing, and we will work with anybody. But I think what's really important, and what's being forgotten here, is there are millions of people out there who don't normally vote in referendums, who can be brought in to vote if we're prepared to talk about believing in our country and controlling our borders. There's also a whole swathe of people on the left of politics, all right, who, who potentially That's... are Eurosceptic and who are not going to be attracted to a Westminster-based campaign which is mostly run by Conservatives. So we need different elements to all of this. OK, so it's a, it's a mixed message, then, danger coming across, then, isn't it? If you're not, going to unify, no mixed... you're not going to unify the message, because you also left out of it, Mr Farage, is the groups that so far are saying, we're waiting for the renegotiation to take place. Yeah. We don't know which way we'll go. <coughs> we might go, no, if we don't well, like what the Prime well, Minister gets. Well the, well, the answer to that's quite simple. What renegotiation? It was pretty clear last week when I met the French President that, that, that there, is no, there is no renegotiation. And if you look at today's Sunday Telegraph, I know you've just been through the reviews. You know, what the British government are asking for, frankly, is nothing. I mean, look, at the heart of this, there are lots and lots of arguments. At the heart of this, a recent ICM poll showed 52% would vote to stay in the European Union if we could control our borders. If we can't control our borders, that falls to 36%. Just let me ask you about that, because you mentioned it. I mean, it was extraordinary footage I watched uh, when you delivered your, your speech there in front of uh, Mr Hollande, especially. You called him a pipsqueak. You called his country a pipsqueak. Yes. Uh, how did that translate, then, into French? I'm not sure what the <laughs> translators made it. I mean, look, we, you know, 25 years ago, when we were pushing towards you know, a political European Union, pushing towards a single currency, France and Germany had equivalent strength. The point I was making is that now it is a completely German-dominated European so Union. So are we pipsqueaks too in the UK as well, because we're still in the EU dominated by the Germans? Quite in frankly, what, what Mrs Merkel says is what happens, and that happens, you know, whether it's to do with the euro, whether it's to do with the migration crisis, she is very much in charge. Let me get back to the, uh, the Leave uh, EU, well, the campaign to get out, whatever yeah. you do. You talk there about uh, figures on the left, um, there were figures within the Conservative Party. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn 
has said, well, you know, he's not entirely sure about the European Union. Could you see figures like that? Well, Jeremy Corbyn, for 40 years, has been against Britain being a member of the European Union. He was a, he, he was a fan of Tony Benn. Uh, nobody made a democratic argument against being members of the European project better than Tony Benn. Benn was a great patriot, believed that we should govern our own country, not surrender control of our parliament and our courts elsewhere. Uh, and, and, and Corbyn, we all know that Corbyn wants to leave the EU, but he finds himself the leader of a party and within that parliamentary party who have been almost completely taken in by the European project. So he's, he's backed off, sadly. It's a shame. But do you think he should, could still be convinced? Obviously not going to share, share a platform with you, but you know, come that? around to the note. Would you what think, is, think well, Jeremy well, Corbyn well, could? Well, you know, my position is, I think this is the most important question we're going to face in our lifetimes. I think left-wing politics and right-wing politics are irrelevant compared to the issue of do we control our own country, do we control our own borders. I'd share a platform with pretty much anybody. Including Jeremy Corbyn? Of course. Well, you wouldn't, uh, would you share one with Lord Lawson, who's on, uh, on your side, it seems, but um, says oh, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to have any dealings with uh, xenophobic no, parties. I'm, I'm, he was referring to UK. I don't think I'm posh enough for him. Uh, but, I, but, but, but despite, you know, being abused, which I'm pretty used to, I would still share a platform with him. Of course I would. I want to win this referendum. I'm not interested in factionalism. I'm not interested in party tribalism. I want to win this referendum. Mm, and and we, we've left out address it now, uh, elements of the Conservative Party. There are many within the Conservative Party who are already, I know you've been yeah. speaking to them, you recruited one of them. Uh, they are outers. I think a lot of the Conservative Party is in that position. And, and, and what is really clear is that the Conservative Party are bitterly, bitterly split over this. Perhaps they have been for four decades. But on the one hand, you've got Cameron and Osborne, who basically are going to offer us the status quo. And on the other, you've got Boris and Theresa May, making demands that look pretty impossible. So I think uh, Mr Cameron's in for a very tough time. I'm certain that of the Conservative Party in the country, well over half of them now want to leave the EU. Boris Johnson would be a feather in the out cap, wouldn't he? Well, we might just get him. We might just get him, and he's a recognisable figure, um, and that would be good news. OK, Mr Farage, very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. UKIP leader Nigel Farage there.